after our trip to Sweden, life felt like being trapped inside a badly written novel, full of red herrings, plot holes, repetitions and stereotypes. Worst of all, we couldn't seem to escape without having to incur the extravagant cost of PCR tests or having to quarantine in expensive government-designated hermetically sealed hotels. Staycation was the way forward, if not the way out. So we headed for Scotland on a road trip. No matter how far we drove into the highlands, past fairy tale castles laden with far better plots, or rode into locks that threatened monsters, or hiked up mountains where highlanders once were freedom warriors, we couldn't seem to escape our saga. Coronavirus. With half the population of Sweden, Scotland scored a higher excess death rate for 2020, having imposed all the draconian rules we'd had in England, and even more. Now, they were the first in the UK to introduce vaccine passports. What did the Scottish people think? I think, I think uh, in general, we've, uh, the Scottish government's cared more for the Scottish people and put them first. I actually think it was okay. I work in education so it kind of went okay for us and I think we had a government that certainly did a wee bit better than what the whole UK did. How do you think it was better here than in England? I think we were told the reality. I think we made our own decisions based on the information that we had. Whereas I think in the UK, I think that the government cared about themselves and their reputation. I mean, I think England were just a lot quicker to try and like open the country, uh, like the things in the country back up, you know, like pubs and things. Um, I think the general attitude of a lot of people down south as well, uh, they were more kind of wanting to things to go back to normal, which I think that we have definitely responded to it a lot um, smarter than England has. I think she's just been more mindful and not rushing back as quickly, um, and also. In terms of, um, I think, face masks, she brought in covering first. and The important thing she did is probably the keeping everybody informed. Do you know anything about Sweden and how it was handled there? Uh, no. No. Nothing right. at all. <laughs> I don't actually know. No. No. I'm not sure. Sorry, I can't answer that. I've heard small parts about Sweden about them as what is it basically ignoring it and just getting on with life and yeah well not so much as ignoring it but they didn't do lockdown they didn't wear masks they didn't close schools and, and they're they had fine. half they had half the excess deaths well to, uh, yeah a bit. It's, it's hard I mean you're only you can only base it on what you're hearing in papers as to what we have to do we should do that and we're not doing that um, but I mean, we don't know that. We're here, Sweden's there. We, we, we don't really know. If we were there and we had that to see, that's working out. Is that what's actually happened? It's hard to believe what's going on, or who to believe now? There's that many theories going about on who, why this happened, why it's happening. You're hearing so many conspiracy theories about things now. And conspiracy theories, one by one, they had made the headline news. digital IDs for the digital revolution. I don't know who to believe it at all. What, what do you think is if instead of following Boris, she had followed Anders Stegner? Oh, I would rather, yeah, yeah. See, to be honest, I, I would follow most people before I would follow Boris, to be honest. She waited for Boris Johnson to make a decision and copied it. The sole reason that if it was a wrong decision, she could say, I told you so, that was a wrong decision. If things went south in England, she could say, well, I told you we had to wait. So that, that's my take on it. Right. Um, she didn't take any sort of leadership to say, right, this is what we are going to do. It was always, it was always on the back of what Westminster decided to do. 
Interesting. Do you know anything about what happened in Sweden? Do you know who Anders Stegnell is? They um, seem to be okay. Yeah. So what do you think if, if, if Nicola Sturgeon had followed Sweden it's hard instead to say. of England? I don't know. I like the thought of what would maybe have happened, but we are where we are, I suppose. So, yeah, it's been fine. It is what it is. Can't really change anything. It's the government at the end of the day. No, well, I think it's been proven that herd immunity as a, an action on its own isn't going to cut it. Herd immunity. What about herd mentality? I mean, everyone follow the official narrative no matter what. Stay locked down no matter what your health condition or age is. Behave as if you're contagious no matter whether you have symptoms or not. Get an experimental jab even if the risk-benefit ratio plays against you. Sir Christopher Cho. But it also, I think very worryingly, says that there are 1,632 reports of deaths having taken place shortly after vaccination. I think it's very important uh, that uh, we are able to put this issue uh, into context because there's a lot more damage being done to our citizens as a result of COVID-19 vaccinations than in any other vaccination program in history. If this one-size-fits-all approach was not the dawn of totalitarianism, then people were definitely being treated as cattle. No wonder Sturgeon had appointed a vet for her chief scientific advisor. We decided to contact Professor Julie Fitzpatrick to see if she'd answer our many questions, just like Tegnell had the previous summer. Hello, 